friends. Welcome. Happy Good Omens Day. <laughs> Today is a Sunday and I'm going to be watching Good Omens. And yes, that is Dan and Full Games on my screen because I was binging their videos ever since the announcement that they were coming back because that's just that's the way this parasocial relationship works and i'm gonna move on to another parasocial relationship that i've developed with the characters of good omens <laughs> violence is that john ham wait what Oh, okay. Can I help you? Sorry, I was like confused for a second because I wasn't sure. The last time that I saw... Saw? The last time that I saw the Ineffable Husbands together was in this spot. So I thought that they were getting caught like two days before or they were being sussed out two days before the end of the world by John Hamm, which is something you never want when you're in a homosexual relationship i guess but it looks like this is a known bookstore that aziraphale owns and so you know anyone can just come in and out discuss my purchase in a private place because i am buying uh <laughs> pornography pornography gabriel come into my uh, back room who else is in your back room we must buy our pornography secretly this is so human human beings are so simple oh they're idiots well, we just wanted to stop by and check on the status of the Antichrist. Why? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's going perfectly. There's a lot happening. All good. Well, all going according to the divine plan. The Hellhound has been set loose, and now the four horsemen of the apocalypse are being summoned. Who exactly summons them? Not my department. I believe we outsource that sort of thing. It's about time, that's what I say. To see. Thank you for my pornography! That's how I leave a wedding. <laughs> Is that the Mona Lisa? It's about the Antichrist. Yeah, great kid. Takes after his dad. Now, our operatives <laughs> in the state, the four horsemen will begin their final ride. Yay. Armageddon will begin. We are the fallen. Never forget that. Well, it's not the sort of thing you forget. I don't trust you, Crowley. Everything's oh. going just fine. I guess he's sort of in the right not to trust. He is a snake. Meet the summoner. He has four items to deliver in his van. That's so interesting how the outsourcing that they do are, I'm assuming, to other humans because it feels like the same kind of outsourcing that they did with the demonic nuns, right? And then they just like wipe the entire convent clean. Antichrist convent. And he's about to make his first delivery in a former war zone. Uh, somebody has to sign the peace agreement first. They do, and it's me. Damn, this peace agreement is going absolutely south. Oh. Package for you, miss. You, uh, you have to sign for it. Finally. Put it down. I'd love to stay and get to know you all better, but duty calls. Is that one of the four horsemen? And you can't have a war without her. She's been killing time for so long now. Time and sometimes people. Burning in England. We've found a major pulsifer. All is prepared. She suspects nothing. She I has a name. With a pin. Bring no more milk, not this day or ever. For today, I am to die in flames. Yours, Agnes Nutter. Oh, from the first episode. She says running each morning in an unladylike manner around the village doesn't improve her health. <laughs> but how can we be certain she is a witch? She cured me of the howling tops. And killed my son of the bloody flocks. Man, women have it so tough throughout history. You're just out here trying to help the rest of them so that they leave you alone. Like, you know, simple shit. Like, during a supposedly, especially during this time, fatal illness that could have struck upon the child of one of the villagers and then they thank you with pitchforks and also talking shit about you like no one likes being called a witch at least during this time now though i kind of get it like it's kind of badass it's an era it's a it's a it's a moment i should have been aflame 10 minutes since <laughs> wow either she's about to perform a magic trick or she's ready to die there is no in between come close and tell the fire near scorchy for I charge ye that all must see how the last true witch in England dies. Let my death be a message to the world. Oh, 
Oh. A hat belongeth to Witchfinder Major. Among the folk from the next village, there was Thou shalt not commit adultery, Pulsifer. Disaster had been materially helped by Agnes's petticoats, in which she had concealed 50 pounds of gunpowder and Interesting. Of so both. Magic trick and was ready to die. They were to be given to her daughter and her son-in-law, John and Virtue Device. The nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter. Oh my. An apple will arise no man can eat. Invest thy money in Master Job's machine and good fortune will tend thy days. Master Job's apple? Oh my god. She's talking about Bill Gates. <laughs> That's crazy. She predicted the growth of Macintosh. Agnes Nutter was the very first That's So Raven. That's so Agnes. That's so Nutter. She was also outsourced? Well, no, because like the outsources so far have been mortals. And it seems as though either she's getting, she or she got, rest in peace, Miss Nutter, insider scoop information from people beyond. And that's how she was getting all these messages from the future. Her spirit guides were actual angels and demons. Or, you know, she herself was magic. Like, women being written out of history. What else is new? I mean, this is Balderdash. And Nostradamus' stuff made sense? In a precise and accurate description of the events that would culminate in Armageddon. Mm. It was on the money in every single detail. Is that a boulder? On Agnes Nutter's great, 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 great granddaughter was drawing on the title page. And metaphorically, the book had just begun to tick. Prophecy 2214. In December 1980, an apple will arise that no man can eat. 2230. Four shall ride and three <gasps> shall ride the sky as two. And one shall ride in flame. And there shall be no stopping. Meanwhile, in Dorking, Surrey, thou shalt not commit adultery. Pulsifer's great 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 grandson should have been in bed hours ago. Oh, it's not your bedtime, dear. Just a few moments. No, the thunder and lightning are back, just like yesterday. It's so scary every time. I really hate it. Like it's on on time too. <laughs> Seven thirty or like around six, I would start thundering. Oh God! Now I want to go to bed. Not to, like, stay in bed and sleep, but just to hide from the thunder and lightning. I'm an adult. Um, Good luck on the new job. I hope it works out this time. Wait, is that... Jack... What's his name? Hall? White? Wait, if I pause this, I'll see the name. Jack Whitehall. <laughs> I really said both of his last names and thought that they were two separate names. He's the camera work the is, like, the office, UK, yeah. for some reason. Oh, he's just bad with technology, Sorry. it seems like. Not very good with computers. No, he got fired so quickly. Purpose of your visit to the United Kingdom? Oh, I'm commanded by an ancient family prophecy. I'm going to use all the wisdom and witchcraft at my disposal to hunt down the heart of darkness and then do all that I can to destroy it before it brings about the end of the world. So pleasure. <laughs> Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> they are hidden in our midst. I'm the thin red line that stands between humanity and the darkness. Hey, I'm talking about witches. Hey, there's nobody can stop them but me. There is no longer a witchfinder general. Nor is there a witchfinder colonel, a witchfinder major, not even a witchfinder captain. I think all of those still exist. They just have different titles now. <laughs> they are called incels. Get your wallet out, laddie. But, but that He's is jobless. I don't like this guy. Why um, are you friends with him? Witchfinder Sergeant Shadwell. Newton. Newton Pulsifer. That's a familiar name now you mention it. The last of the Witchfinders. Yes. How many nipples have you got? What? Four. Nipples, laddie. How many? Um, just the usual two. Oh, it's okay. disappointing. Be here at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Ring scissors. Must have two nipples to hang out. Also scissors. Assistant required to combat the forces of darkness. Uniform basic training provided. Must have two nipples any more or any less you will be rejected at the door <laughs> lost hat in a book oh because that's the book that's the would that be the bookstore that Aziraphale runs that was in Soho right he had heard about talking to plants in the early 70s and thought it an excellent idea 
I've heard that too. Although talking is perhaps the wrong word for what Crowley does. Is that a spot? Oh my god, is he emotionally is abusive towards the plants? But I've told you all about leaf spots. I will not stand for them. You're the one that's supposed to be caring for them. Say goodbye to your friend. No. Just couldn't cut it. You you could so cut it. So much more. Than you don't have to throw away the whole you thing. You guys grow better. What he does is put the fear of God into them. I love that. More precisely, the fear of Crowley. That's horrific. You could have just cut out that one leaf or something. Nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter. I'm so sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> well, of course I know who she was. Born 1600, exploded 1656. Oh. But there are no copies of her book available. Oh. No, I can't name my prize. I don't have copies it. ever Nobody existed. Can. Away with you, Harlan. Scarlet woman. Jezebel! All right. Nice Chill out. How can sugar do? He's in the army now, Jezebel. He'll make his own tea. It is raining so hard. I don't know if you can hear that. Ah. I, I have thought of an idea. What? Uh, uh, when you did the baby swap 11 years ago, could something have gone wrong? You still know, we know. his age, his birthday. He's 11. You make it sound easy. I can't be that hard. I just hope nothing's happened to him. How will you be able to find the, how many 11 year olds exist? Only have to uh, find his birth records. Well, that's true. They, it is in the one hospital. But the problem is that that entire nunnery convent of antichristness is completely burned down. Like, how will you find those documents? What's the road? And that is my cue to go, because I'm scared. I'll be right back when that's done doing whatever it's doing. I will be under the covers if you need me. Listen, I do not care what your opinion is. The difference between the previous clip and this clip is only five minutes. I dare you to spot a difference between the last clip and this one. You won't find one. You won't find one. It's exactly... The exact same day, I did not take a nap, and it is not six days later as I continue to film this. Also, I'm it's replaying this part so because five minutes, I need to be caught up again. Not because it's six days later. Away with you, Harlot. Scarlet woman. Jezebel! Jezebel! You are, as of now, which find the private falsifier. We used to be powerful. We used to be important. Oh my god, okay, I'm remembering. I'm remembering things. Yeah, he was he is a descendant of one of the more well-known witch finders in the back back in the in the day of the back. Again, just refreshing this for myself because five minutes takes a takes a while. Like I forget things really quickly. I'm a goldfish. Oh, this soup is so good. I made this by the way. It's sinigang. It's sour soup. But I need chopsticks. I'll be right back. Don't look at me, I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> And the time of our lives. <laughs> you know what our first weapon is? Um, ourselves. Well, Scissors. You know what we do with them. You cut the hair? You give him a good haircut. We read. And we cut. Uh, I see. It's a ransom note. Put different letters together type of. I, I have. No, it's the I plant see. abuser. Yes. I remember you. I just hope nothing's happened to him. Nothing's happened to him. He happens to everything. So we love that. Nothing happens to him. He happens to everything. Where is this hospital anyway? Village near Oxford, Tadfield. And knowing what I know about nuns, which is not a lot, they probably didn't computerize any of that. None of that stuff's in the cloud. Velvet Underground. You wouldn't like it. Oh right, he listens to Velvet bebop. Underground. Yeah, Bebop. You're right. Wensley Dale's first name is Jeremy. Nobody's ever used it, not even his parents, who call him youngster. That's horrific. God sounds almost exactly the way I would picture God to sound. That's not to say that I've always headcanon Francis McDormand as God. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like in terms of intonation and how God explains things with already knowing the future, the past, and all of the happenings that are happening in parallel to the happening now, 
shut up. I don't want to. The way that God just like narrating this story for us, first of all, where it's like, it's funny and you're not sure if they mean to be funny with it or if God is just simply explaining a fact and it just happened to be funny. There's a gentleness to the tone and it feels commanding, but not in a way that makes you feel like you don't have free will, even though free will is still kind of debatable in this show. I can say about this show that God sounds like a convincing God. Like nothing about it feels like a parody. That actually sounds like legit, like God. I don't know. Every gang needs a Brian. Always That's true. Me. Brian's such a goofy Support name as well. No offense to the, the Brian's out there. So many pieces at play right now. Excuse me, my father says there's no such thing as witches. I'm sorry, your father that calls you youngster? I wouldn't trust the thing he says. I forgot his name. Wesley? <laughs> youngster? Jeremy. <laughs> no, not me forgetting his name too. Well, you don't think American diplomats' wives usually give birth in little religious hospitals in the middle of nowhere, do you? Ah, uh, but evil always contains the seeds of its own destruction. In the end, it will founder on the rocks of iniquity and vanish. In the end, it will founder on the rocks of iniquity and vanish. And also, like, maybe Sister Mary Loquacious? I'm not trying to blame, like, one nun, because I know they already have it real bad. I'm just saying that, like, is that nun dead? Is she gone forever? For my money, it was just an ordinary cock up. And I am. <laughs> what? Oh, there's paint. Oh. Hey, look at the state of this coat. I've kept this in tip top condition for over 180 years now. I'll never get this stain out. Oh. Aww. Thank you. He could run a very successful laundromat. Don't you all not disapprove of guns? Yeah, unless they're in the right hands. Then they give weight Interesting. To then they give weight to a moral argument. Interesting. That that's that's a take. That's a real take. Is there a fail? Oh, like the more that he opens his mouth and like talks for some reason, I'm just because the thing is with Crowley, he's practical and evil. He likes spoopy things and all of that. It's somewhat expected of the devil to be somewhat. I don't know. I kind of maybe every time he says something that's both practical and wise. I'm just like, yeah, that's very Crowley. For some reason, like Aziraphale, and I don't know what this says about me, the angel part of all of this, I'm very curious about, like, I, I, I wanna hear his takes on everything because even though he is an angel, he does seem to be morally gray. I mean, I get it. If I worked with like dicks like Gabriel. The management training no longer meant watching half a dozen unreliable PowerPoint presentations. They wanted to establish leadership potential. Group oh, cooperation and initiative. Yeah. Which allowed their employees to fire paintballs at any I love that. I mean, laser tag could have also been uh, an option, but maybe they were afraid that, I don't know, sex would happen. Because <laughs> it's a dark area and there's so many corners. <laughs> used as a hospital by an order of satanic nuns who weren't <gasps> actually very good at it. Loquacious! You know, Curly, I've always said that deep down, you really are I think you're a nice, nice guy. Shut it. I'm yeah, don't you dare. Nice. Nice. I get it. Nice. Can I help you? Loquacious! Not me just asking where she was at the start of this episode and then her appearance. She really just be everywhere. She really just be talking still. It's in the name. Loquacious. You weren't by any chance a nun here at this convent 11 years ago, were you? I was. What happened to the baby I gave you? I swapped him with the son of the American ambassador. Then Sister Teresa Garrulus came and took the other baby away. This American ambassador, what was his name? Where did he come from? And what did he do with the baby? Nick Offerman. He raised her and she is now named April Ludgate. Last thing we need right now is- Oh no! Who hit someone? I didn't. Someone hit me. Let there be light! Angels can do that! And then demons bring darkness, of course. No bones broken. <laughs> Not an angel helping a witch. Well, I guess he doesn't know. I got carried away. Oh, you can drop me off here. Can they just have conversations without the other person hearing it? Oh no, that's how he finds out. Cause she leaves her shit. When we get on. Get in, I know. I know he's an angel, so it's basically like if 
Aziraphale were human, Crowley would be like, let's go, let's go, human, whatever. But I don't know, get an angel. Like, I know he's an angel, but like, still. Still. Sometimes nicknames can be so powerful. <laughs> Sometimes nicknames can really, like, seal the deal for you, dude. Like, I don't know. They'd just be like, okay, devil. <laughs> actually, actually, look at me. Humans are good at finding other humans. They've been doing it for thousands of years. Other humans might be able to sense him. He's the Antichrist. He's got an automatic defense thingy. You know, maybe horses can be able to recognize it. Don't they have like a very keen sense for detecting evil in human beings? Ducks. What about ducks? Yeah, what water slides off. <laughs> water off a duck's back? Well, what is, how does, what does that? Nobody at all. <laughs> Not him holding that in the entire day. Oh, there's a book back there. Oh, Mine's no. not mine. I don't read books. What you lot do? <gasps> oh, and he would know that book. That was the book that someone was looking for earlier in his bookstore. Oh, and he's hiding this from Crowley. He's not saying anything. Interesting. What are you up to? Yeah, tickety boo. That's what he said. Tickety fucking boo. When that the angel readeth these words of mine in his shoppy, <laughs> then the final days are certs upon us. Oh no, they are not on the right path. <laughs> oh no. For thy cocoa doth grow cold. He has to read the the whole book. See, this is what I'm saying about like free will and stuff being questionable in so much of what goes on here because like if predictions are real which the show has established it can be does it even matter the choices that we make i guess it can matter because prophecies can only take you to a certain point um so does you know the same way that like fate and destiny can in a way because it can take you to where you have to be but maybe free will will play into you being at the right place at the right time whatever that means right place right time and making a decision Maybe that's it. Maybe that's where free will plays into it. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. I just finished my soup. It was delectable. And I actually have to be somewhere in two minutes. Nope. I'm late. I'm three minutes late. That <laughs> I, mean, I just looked at the clock. I had to be somewhere in two minutes, five minutes ago. <laughs> Let's finish this episode. Let's wrap it up. He is not what he says. No news, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, if I had anything, I would tell you. Ooh, what if like he reads something in this book that tells him to withhold the information because the actual like, or, or maybe because like Crowley will have a hand at the actual Armageddon or a betrayal is going to happen. Oh my God, you're spoiling yourself, Aziraphale. <laughs> Maybe for the betterment of humankind, sure. But still, a spoiler's a spoiler. He's going to know you're up to something when you're acting like this. You know that, right? Like, this man can smell you. Because I was also thinking that how could the witches have not, the generation of witches after Agnes Nutter, not have predicted that the book would be lost <laughs> if all of the prophecies are true. And it is in there that you know, in, in 3008, Aziraphale would somehow come to find this. Didn't predict that, did you? <laughs> Let him have understood. Oh, the, he pulled out the Bible for this. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. What is that? What kind of God math is that? <gasps> really? Hatfield 046 Young, him. Dad, look. Wow. <gasps> Sorry, right number. <laughs> right number. <laughs> That's so interesting. Oh my goodness. Oh, what an episode. Um, I think we left uh, much of the witch hunter stuff, you know, with Mr. Shadwell and all of that and the Jezebel. That one's still up in the air, but I'm excited. This is so good. And I'm also just like really happy to be consuming this now. I really want to try and catch up before the latest season drops, which I don't even know if I should be doing that because I'm in a drought right now. Our flag means death just ended. I just saw the last episode today. It ended on Thursday, but I only managed to watch it today. I mean... I mean, I mean, I mean, no, uh, 
not that a Thursday has passed since the first clip that you saw. That is that is the video. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. I have to go. I'm in a hurry. Uh, hopefully I can get this out this week and watch some more later tonight. I mean, for me, I'm going to be watching it. That video is not going to go out yet, but you'll be seeing this video. You get it. That That's my prophecy. Pew, 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 pew.